We now move on to the ACI 318 design requirements for beams and one-way slabs. Detailed design requirements will be presented for flexure, serviceability, shear, and torsion. Throughout the discussion, provisions will be presented on how to size the cross-section, how to determine the required amount of reinforcement, and how to detail the reinforcement. Intermingled with the strength requirements are serviceability requirements, which are meant to provide satisfactory service level performance. Also presented throughout the discussion will be information on economical formwork. A clear understanding of the code prescribed strength requirements is essential before any design can proceed. These requirements are found in Chapter 9. In general, the design strength of a member must be greater than or equal to the required strength of that member. The design strength is equal to the strength reduction factor times the nominal strength of the member. The required strength is equal to the load factor times the service load effects. Next, we'll briefly discuss each of these items. Strength reduction factors, or fee factors, account for understrength of a member due to tolerances in member dimensions, variations in material strengths, inaccuracies in the design equations, the degree of ductility, the required reliability of the loaded member, and the importance of that member in the structure. Fee factors are given in section 9.3. As an example of why fee factors are used in design, consider a concrete mix that is to be used in a beam of a cast-in-place concrete building. The engineer has specified a compressive strength of 4,000 PSI at 28 days. At the time the beam is cast, specimens of the concrete mix are collected and are subsequently tested in accordance with the provisions of Chapter 5. It's found that a single test yields a strength of 3750 PSI. Chapter 5 allows a small number of tests to fall below the design strength. The fee factor that the engineer used in the design of the beams partly accounts for the possibility that a lower compressive strength concrete is actually used in the beam. Thus, redesign of the beam using the lower concrete compressive strength is not required. The nominal strength of a member, or cross-section, is calculated using the assumptions and strength equations of the strength design method before the application of any strength reduction factors. We will be presenting the nominal strength equations for flexure, shear, and torsion in the upcoming sections of this module. Load factors are used to increase the service loads. Factored loads are the service loads specified in the general building code multiplied by the appropriate load factors. Load combinations are specified in section 9.2. The factor assigned to each load is influenced by the degree of accuracy to which the load effect can be calculated and the variation that might be expected in this load during the life of the structure. Load factors also account for the variability in structural analysis used to compute the bending moments and shear forces in the structure. Load combinations that would commonly control the design of beams and one-way slabs in typical building structures are summarized here. Included are the effects due to dead loads, live loads, wind loads, and earthquake loads. In assigning factors to combinations of loads, the load factors account for the fact that it is not likely that the maximum values of the service loads will occur simultaneously. In addition, the last two equations consider the possibility that wind or earthquake loads may be in the opposite direction of the dead load. Section 9.2 should be consulted for all the load combinations that need to be considered based on the applicable load effects. Let's now move on to the flexural design requirements of ACI 318.05 as they pertain to cast-in-place, non-pre-stressed concrete beams and one-way slabs. Our goal in this section is to determine the cross-sectional dimensions and the amount of reinforcement that is required when a concrete beam or one-way slab is subjected to bending moments. In order to determine these quantities, it is important to establish the equations that define the nominal flexural strength of the cross-section. The strength of a member computed by the strength design method of ACI 318 requires that two basic conditions be satisfied. The first is static equilibrium, 
and the second is compatibility of strains. Additionally, strength design is based on the assumptions given in sections 10.2.2 through 10.2.7. These are discussed next. The first design assumption is that the strain in the reinforcement and the concrete is directly proportional to the distance from the neutral axis. Many tests have confirmed that the distribution of strain is essentially linear across a reinforced concrete cross-section, even near ultimate strength. For deep beams, the strain is not linear. For these beams, a nonlinear distribution of strain must be used, or a strut and tie model, as outlined in Appendix A, may be used. The second design assumption is that the maximum usable strain at the extreme concrete compression fiber is equal to 0.003. Although the maximum strain at crushing of the concrete has been observed in tests to range from 0.003 to higher than 0.008 under special conditions, the strain at which ultimate moments are developed is usually about 0.003 to 0.004 for members of normal proportions and materials. The third design assumption is that the stress in the reinforcing steel is equal to the modulus of elasticity, E sub s, times the steel strain when the stress in the steel is below the specified yield stress, F sub y. This can be seen in the figure. For strains greater than the yield strain, epsilon sub y, the stress in the reinforcement is taken equal to F y. In other words, the increase in strength due to strain hardening of the reinforcement is neglected in strength computations. The fourth design assumption is that the tensile strength of concrete shall be neglected in axial and flexural calculations of reinforced concrete. The tensile strength of concrete in flexure, which is defined as the modulus of rupture, is a more variable property than the compressive strength. On average, the tensile strength is about 10 to 15 percent of the compressive strength. This assumption is in good agreement with tests for members with normal percentages of reinforcement. However, the tensile strength of concrete is important in cracking and deflection considerations at service load, and this will be shown later. The fifth assumption recognizes the inelastic stress distribution in concrete at high strains. In particular, the relationship between the concrete compressive stress and the concrete strain may be rectangular. Trapezoidal. Parabolic. Or any other shape that results in predictions of strength that are in substantial agreement with the results of comprehensive tests. The actual distribution of concrete compressive stress is complex. Research has shown that the important properties of the concrete stress distribution can be closely approximated using the several different forms of stress distribution which have been described briefly here. The sixth and last design assumption is that an equivalent rectangular concrete stress distribution can be used to satisfy the requirements of section 10.2.6 which contains the fifth design assumption. In this equivalent distribution, a concrete stress equal to 85% of the specified concrete compressive strength, F prime C, is uniformly distributed over an equivalent compression zone. This compression zone is bounded by the edges of the cross section and a straight line parallel to the neutral axis at a distance equal to A from the maximum compressive strain fiber. This distance A is equal to a constant, beta 1, times the neutral axis depth, C. The constant beta 1 is equal to 0.85 for concrete with a specified compressive strength less than or equal to 4,000 psi. For concrete with a compressive strength greater than 4,000 psi, beta 1 is reduced continuously at a rate of 0.05 for each 1,000 psi of strength above 4,000 psi. In no case shall beta 1 be taken less than 0.065. In other words, beta 1 is equal to 0.065 for any concrete with a compressive strength greater than or equal to 8,000 psi. 